In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, uh, for the second Sunday of Epiphany, coming to you live from Christchurch in Easter on this beautiful, bright uh, winter's morning. We're continuing with our online-only uh, services for the moment without a congregation, but I do want to welcome those who are here leading the worship with me this morning, Bridget, who will uh, read the lesson, lead us in our intercessions, uh, Stuart, uh, our organist, and Helen, who will lead us in singing uh, the hymns this morning. And welcome to you, uh, wherever you are joining us from this morning, you are very welcome uh, to this celebration. We begin with Helen leading us in our first hymn. It's hymn number 269, 269, if you have hymns ancient and modern, that hymnal to hand. Otherwise, the words are on the pew sheet, which you can find a link to uh, on our website. Can we, by searching, find out God? grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us now confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you 
thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of the God of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, about whom Moses and the law and all the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? 
you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May what I speak, may what you hear, be in the name of the God of love, who creates, redeems, and sustains every single one of us. Amen. So, a verse from that Gospel reading, John chapter 1, verse 46. Nathaniel said to Philip, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You can very much hear the sneering tone there, can't you? The mocking tone in his voice. Can anything good come out of that place? It's a bit harsh, all right, but in fairness to Nathaniel, maybe he did have a point. Nazareth, small, remote, unremarkable, unknown, Nazareth, one-horse town, Nazareth. It wasn't exactly the um, obvious hometown for a would-be messiah, for a would-be king of the Jews, was it? Surely the Christ, the Anointed One, for whom all of Israel had been waiting, surely he should come from somewhere more grand, somewhere more important, somewhere more appropriate. Somewhere like, I don't know, Jerusalem, for example. Ah, Jerusalem. Now that would have been a far more believable place to be the hometown of the Messiah. Far more believable than Nazareth. Jerusalem, after all, was the capital city, the capital city with tens of thousands of inhabitants, maybe up to 80,000, the scholars tell us, an enormous number for the time. And Jerusalem, remember, was the site of the temple. And the temple, remember, was no ordinary religious building, it wasn't just another synagogue. No, the temple was God's dwelling place on earth. Wow. And Jerusalem was wealthy, after all, and Jerusalem was self-confident and secure and safe because it had big high walls built around it to defend it, to protect it. But, as we know, big and important, big and self-important perhaps, as it might have been, Jerusalem was not going to be the hometown of the Messiah. No, no. The Messiah was to be brought up in a small place, a village called Nazareth. A small, poor, unpretentious village with maybe, I don't know, a few hundred inhabitants at most. There was no temple in Nazareth. No temple filled with lots of terribly learned and clever priests. There were no high walls around Nazareth, no high walls to keep trouble out and those inside safe. And there was no fancy buildings or king's palaces in Nazareth, nothing much really to inspire awe or fear in those who happened to pass through. Yeah, it's quite a contrast, isn't it? Nazareth versus, say, Jerusalem. Let me put it this way, I'm no expert yet on UK geography, but I suppose you could say that if Nazareth, I'm sorry, if Jerusalem, if Jerusalem is London, the capital, then Nazareth is, well, you tell me, somewhere perhaps in the remote Scottish Highlands maybe, some small village or some village in a remote Welsh valley, for example. I mean no disrespect, by the way. I'm from a tiny town in the west of Ireland myself. But my point is this. It would have been difficult to imagine, both for Nathaniel, as we heard him say in this morning's reading, 
It would have been difficult to imagine for many people at the time of Jesus. It would have been difficult to imagine a more unlikely, a more inappropriate, as they would see it, hometown for a Messiah than Nazareth. And yet that's how it happened. Jesus of Nazareth. But so what, you may be thinking, so what, it's all very interesting, but what's it got to do with us? What's it got to do with you and with me? Well, as I see it, it has a lot to do with us, because it's like this. There's a little bit of Nathaniel in all of us, I think. After all, we too, very often, like him, are looking for something, looking for meaning, looking for purpose, looking to make sense of it all, looking for God, perhaps more so than ever during this COVID pandemic. And maybe like Nathaniel, we too are sometimes tempted to think that God can only be found, should only be found, in the obvious places, the officially holy places, the lofty places, whatever that might mean. But the message of today's gospel actually scrub that, the message of the entire gospel is that God is very often to be found in the unexpected places, the overlooked places, small places, places like Nazareth, where there's no temple, and no priests, and no obvious, perhaps, signs of God's presence. But I have to tell you this. I have to tell you that in my years as a priest, and most particularly in this last, most difficult of years, that has been my experience. More often than not, I have experienced something of the divine, something of God, not so much in the big, grand places and occasions, but in the small, often overlooked, often unnoticed places. For example, I have seen something of God in the love of a family member sitting hour by hour at the bedside of their desperately ill loved one. Or I have seen something of God, maybe you have too, I have seen something of God in the vulnerability and the courage of someone sharing a difficult part of their life story with me. And I have seen something of God, maybe you have too, in the work of those unsung heroes who without fuss or fanfare just get on with reaching out to the lonely, supporting the needy, welcoming the stranger. And I have seen something of God, and again maybe you have too, in the quiet determination of those who have been hurt by life's tragedies and cruelties their quiet determination to hold on to hope and hold on to their faith. And you know what I've come to realize? That's where God is always to be found. Wherever love endures, come what may. Wherever vulnerability is acknowledged and shared. Wherever kindness reaches across the distance between us wherever the wounded refuse to give up hope. As the old Latin phrase puts it, ubi caritas et amor deus ibi est, where love, charity, compassion are. There is God. There, no matter how unlikely or improbable there may seem, there, even if we don't always sense it or feel it, there is God. There's a story about a student who went to his rabbi and said, Rabbi, I have a question. Where does God live? Good question. And the wise old rabbi smiled and said, hmm, where does God live? wherever a human being lets God in. So here's my prayer for us all as we head into this deeply uncertain year of 2021. I pray that whatever comes our way in these 12 months, that we would be given the grace 
to be open, open to seeking God in often overlooked places and people, open to vulnerability as the path to empathy and hope, open to finding purpose in even the seemingly smallest acts of kindness, open, basically, to letting God in. John chapter 1, verse 46, Nathanael asked, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You bet it can. You bet it can. In Jesus' name. Amen. declare our faith in God. We believe, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, hear us as we pray together here on our third Sunday of this new year closing on what cannot be changed, and opening on what we know not yet. We pray that with your love and guidance, we can focus on the coming year and all the challenges that we know it will bring. We pray for the strength to triumph over the many risks and dangers that the COVID pandemic has brought us. We get so busy and our lives get so full that we become distracted by the noise and confusion of daily life. Help us take the time to listen for you. Forgive our deafness and help us to hear you, calling us to come to your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The work of Christmas begins by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with the flocks, 
Then the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal those broken in spirit, to feed the hungry, to release the oppressed, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, to make a little music with the heart, and to radiate the light of Christ every day, in every way, in all that we do and in all that we say. Then the work of Christmas begins. And so we pray to find the lost. Shepherd God who protects the flock and searches tirelessly for those who wander from the field. Retrieve the lost, pick up the ones who struggle and bring them home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. To heal those broken in spirit. Loving God, wrap your arms around those who are broken hearted, depressed, or feeling that no one cares about them. And fill their hearts with your peace, joy, and love. We pray for those on our prayer list who are ill. Yasmin Ingram. Stuart Williams, Maureen O'Brien, Viola Mason, Betty Whitney, Yesop Yang, Sandra Argent, Hedley Williams, Janet Williams, and Jeff Walker. And we pray for those who have departed this life, Joe and Leon Stork, Jeremy St. John, Mary Teague, and Ingeborg Val, and pray too for their families and friends. And pray for those whose anniversaries fall at this time, Marjorie Dunnocky, David Fairhead, Mike Barnett, Muriel Willen, and Joan Samuel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. To feed the hungry, Faithful God, we pray for everyone who's hungry today, far away or in our local communities. We pray for those who have nothing and those who have too little to eat, and for the many support agencies working abroad and for the food banks nearer to home. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. To release the oppressed, Almighty God, who has created us in your own image, give us grace to fearlessly fight against evil and never to accept oppression. Help us to employ our freedom in the maintenance of justice in our communities and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. To rebuild the nations and to bring peace among all peoples. Creator God, we pray for those countries that have been torn apart by war and terrorism. We ask you to bring about changes that would bring peace and restoration for both populations and cities alike. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. To make a little music with the heart, Father God, we especially pray for our own role in doing the true work of Christmas. May we be the ones who radiate the light of Christ every day, in every way, in all that we do, and in all that we say. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask for your blessing on Isha Church School and its governing body as they seek to appoint a new head teacher. Give all those involved in the selection pro process your gifts of wisdom and sound judgment. Help them to discern the unique qualities each candidate brings and so find a person to take forward the school's vision of Christ at the centre, life to the full. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we pray today for Nate, who spent three years here with us in Isha, as our curate and will be licensed as the Vicar of St Mary's in East Molsey on the 27th of January. We hold in our prayers Nate, Mary and the children as they take this next step 
in their pilgrimage of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, may your light shine our way as once it guided the steps of the Magi, that we too may be led into your presence and worship you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us have one another sign of peace. with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour, sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name 
and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We join our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I'm deeply conscious again this week that we cannot gather to celebrate uh, the Eucharist, the Holy Communion together in the way that we would like. I 
And so I would invite you who are watching online to consider making an act of spiritual communion. Uh, this Sunday you'll find the words of the spiritual communion prayer uh, the, on page 13, page 13 of the order of service. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise. Before we have our final hymn, just a few notices to bring to your attention. You can see all the various Zoom activities in the parish. Uh, it's morning Bible, Bible reflection and prayer on Tuesday morning at 9, morning prayer on Wednesday morning at 9, the fellowship group, which is meeting about once a month at the moment, you'll find the details there too, the book group, which also meets on Zoom, the next meeting on Tuesday, the 2nd of February, and this week, uh, this coming week on Wednesday, it's our usual music on the green uh, date. Of course, uh, at the moment, we cannot have a live audience uh, here in uh, Christchurch for that concert, but we will be live streaming it on our usual channels at 1.15. And we're delighted to welcome the guitarist Alex Hart this uh, Wednesday the 20th, who's going to be playing a beautiful program, including uh, music by Scarlatti, Rodrigo and Barrios. That's on Tuesday at 1.15, live stream on Facebook. And just also to mention again that on Tuesday at 2.30 we have the funeral of Joe and Leon at Stork here in Christchurch and we intend to live stream that also probably through our Facebook, uh, possibly through our YouTube, but if you check the Facebook it will have So our final hymn, it's number 826, if you have the red hymnal in front of you, Ye Holy Angels Bright, the words are on this week's pew sheet.
Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and